Welcome to the Your Life Rocks podcast, where we believe life balance is possible. Yes, even for you. Yes, you. This show is designed to help working moms focus on the things that matter most in life and helping you balance all that life has for you with practical tips from one working mom to another. My name is Jenny Stemmerman, and I am so glad that you're here to hang out with me today. You know, we are just kicking off the new year. If you missed last week's episode, I hope you go back and have a listen because we really talked about three ways that you can kick off the new year in a strong, intentional way. And that word intention really is a theme for us in this January series of the Your Life Rocks podcast. Because as working moms, I think we all want to live more intentionally. We want to do things intentionally to be the mom that we want to be, to be the career woman that we want to be, and to be the wife that we want to be. And so with that in mind, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Today, I have a very special guest joining me on. And, you know, the topic that we're going to be talking about was very intentional on being intentional because it's one of those things that as a mom, we can always put on the back burner and then it creates so much mom guilt. And I am talking about photo books, memory books, keeping all of those mementos for our kids. I know for me, it's a very disorganized mess, and it makes me feel a little bit like a bad mom. And I want to be intentional about feeling like a good mom. And I know that's going to be different for all of us. So before we dive into the discussion with our special guest, I just want to invite you to really think about what is the mom that you want to be? What is that intention that you want to live into as a mom? because only you can answer that for yourself. Now, I do also wanna say that this podcast is sponsored by Prep Dish. I'm gonna be talking a little bit later on about how Prep Dish really helps you live out life intentionally, but if you've already heard me talk about it and you're kind of a little bit on the fence, I just encourage you to try them out. You can do it for free for 14 days by going to prepdish.com forward slash YLR. That stands for Your Life Rocks. Now, the guest I have joining me is a friend of mine. She's actually a former coaching client of mine as well, as she was kicking off her new mom blog. And in that coaching process, she talked to me a little bit about how she has a process for creating these memory books, and she's done it consistently for 10 years. Even though she has a crazy life and three kids and all of these different things she's trying to manage, she has made that a priority for herself. She has been intentional about making sure it gets done. And if you know anything about me, I love a good process. (laughs) And so she's here to teach that process to us so that we can then be intentional ourselves. Our guest today is Melissa Lieberman, and she left her career as a software executive to pursue a more balanced life for what she defines balance to be with her three young boys, her military husband, and her passion for all things related to organization and productivity. She now helps other moms implement solutions to make their life less chaotic and overwhelming and more meaningful. I think we can all agree this is a perfect place to have Melissa sharing with us today on this podcast. So like I said, she does have a process and she's going to share that full process with us as well as some really great tips. So I hope that you enjoy this interview with Melissa as much as I did. So let's get right into the show. Melissa, welcome to the Your Life Rocks podcast. I'm so excited to have you with us. Thanks for having me, Jenny. I'm really excited to be here. This is going to be such a valuable podcast episode. I'm super excited to learn from you because everything that you are going to be teaching us today is stuff that I personally need, and I know our audience is going to love it. But before we get to all of the brilliance that you brought to share with us, uh, tell us a little bit about who you are. Oh, okay. Thanks. Um, I am Melissa Lieberman and I live in Colorado. I grew up in Colorado. My husband is a military uh, in the army. And so we've lived around uh, the country a little bit, including Hawaii. And we are back in Colorado. We have three kids, all boys ages seven, four, and two. And I spent the a good portion of my career for 15 years working in corporate America in software startups. And over the last few years, um, seven or six or so, since I started having kids, I really wanted to take a step back and have time with them and freedom to 
go to activities with them, um, but also continue with some semblance of my career. So I do work part-time for a software startup as well as I'm building my own blog and business around that. So I have lots of irons in the fire, but that's what keeps me going is always kind of being on that edge of chaos. I like that, on the edge of chaos. And with three boys under the age of 10, like that in itself is chaos, <laughs> being a mom of boys myself. And I know you have a special name for your four-year-old. What's, what do you call him? Yes, I, he's the middle child and I call him the Fornado. So last year he was the three-nager and he's graduated to the Fornado and he definitely keeps me on my toes. Although I can now see the two-year-old following in his footsteps and might be even amping it up a notch. I love it. Oh my gosh. You guys, you have to follow Melissa on social media because she shares so transparently about these little guys and the trouble that they're always getting into. It's amazing and it's very entertaining. So I highly encourage that you check her out on social media, Instagram, Facebook, all of that stuff. So I am super excited to be talking about what we're going to be talking about because it really does kind of tie into balance, which for you, you were able to make some decisions in your life to bring more balance in. But like you said, you kind of like to live on the edge of chaos. So with working part-time and managing your own business and being a wife and a mom to three boys under the age of 10, what does balance look like for you? That's a, that's a great question. Um, for me, it's sort of a day-to-day a battle, I guess, if you will. So I sit down every night, I plan out my calendar for the next day, and I try to to balance on a daily basis the work that I'm doing, you know, with the kids and, and what, what time I'm devoting to them and trying to be present with them. So blocking that off and then doing the same for my part-time job and for my blog. So it's definitely something that I strive for every day by kind of taking those intentional steps every evening. Um, you know, but some days you focus really heavily on the kids. So the next day it needs to be more work related. Um, and, and so over the course of the weeks and, and really the month and some techniques that I've used, learned from you is just looking at balance from that bigger perspective as well. So if one day or two day, you know, one day gets out of whack or a few days in a row, it's not um, that balance is not possible or out of line. It's just that looking at a, at a bigger picture and saying, okay, what does my week and month look like? Is that all balanced out? And am I achieving my goals at a bigger level? That's kind of how I look at it. I love it. Yeah. You know, I think that, you know, sometimes we think about balance. We think it's like we have, like it's a destination, like we're either balanced or we're not balanced. But I love using the analogy of it's kind of like when you're balancing yourself on one foot, like it's not that you are either falling over on the ground or you're standing perfectly still. Balance is really that spot in between where you're kind of shifting your weight, you know, side to side, trying not to fall over. That's what balance really is. And I love that you take that bigger picture view of balancing all your different days and the different priorities. I think that that's great. Yeah, I think, you know, what you're saying makes so much sense because it's not, it's so much of my life I've looked at things black and white. It's either you're balanced or you're not. You're this or you're that. And so I guess with age and experience, learning that things aren't black and white and, and there is a lot of gray and embracing that. Beautiful. And that's a perfect transition <laughs> into what I was going to talk to you about next because you guys, Melissa is here to talk to us about picture books for our families, for our kids. And this is one of those areas where Melissa, I have been kind of black and white. I've just kind of said, I don't have time for it. And so I haven't made any effort and I'm going to confess. And I told Melissa this before we jumped onto the podcast. I have still not created baby books for my kids I have them and I move them around in crates full of pictures and mementos and all of the things for years. My kids are 10 and eight and I still have not gotten it done. We have no photo albums. All of our photos live in Dropbox or a bin in the garage. And I feel so guilty about it as a mom, but I kind of feel like you either need to have hundreds of hours to devote to doing that kind of a thing. Um, I think I've kind of written it off my head like that's for stay-at-home moms to do versus, you know, finding a way of, of making it work. And I, you're here to share with us a way of finding a way of making it work. So I'm super excited to learn from you. 
Oh, great. Yeah. So I'm super excited to share this. I lived in that same place. So for me, it was, I think, 10 years ago now that I literally, I literally brought blocked off the entire month of December. It was before I had kids. I took all of these photos. I had photos from probably 10 years built up, including our wedding photos. And I spent every minute that I wasn't at work creating these photo albums for myself and trying to get them organized and it was hours upon hours upon hours and i thought to myself i'm this can't happen anymore so i did i i ended up powering through that and making it happen which would never happen at this point in life with kids and all the other stuff but i did do that and so now um I've, I looked at back at it. It's been 10 years I've been doing this process. So I guess it's something that can, can work consistently. So essentially, the goal is knowing that I cannot, there's no way I could do all of the work in January to make a photo album, you know, an annual photo album for the prior year is just too much work. Like you said, there's too many photos. You can't even remember what happened, you know, last February. Um, and just it becomes very overwhelming. So I started putting together what I call a standard operating procedure for myself to just tackle it every um, a little bit every week. And and therefore the next year in January, the book is almost ready to go. That's amazing. And it, I love to the idea of having one photo book for the entire year. So do you guys kind of cover in that annual book, everything that's happened in the family, or is it just focused on the kids or what's that structure look like? Yeah, that's great. So we, it's everything for the family. So I do have baby books, I will admit, and I have three kids and I do have three baby books. I know a lot of people have one out of three baby books. Um, Hats off to you, sister. (laughs) You're amazing. Um, But I, yeah, so the books are literally our whole family and all the fun stuff that we do and the memories that you don't really, you know, that, that are very fleeting, like the mundane stuff, the funny sayings, um, all of that is captured in the books as well. So I don't know what's going to happen when they, you know, how we divide these books up when they grow up um, between three kids, but we'll deal with that problem later. It's nice to have it all consolidated literally in one, family album. The one I'm looking at right now says our 2016 year. And I've got pictures of the three boys on the front as well as a family picture. That is really, really awesome. And I love too that you are using technology to do this because I know for you, you used to do kind of old school scrapbooking. And I will tell you, I had great intentions. Great great, great intentions of scrapbooking. I had like the tote on wheels that had all of the fun scissors in it and all the gel pens. And I never used any of it. And after about six years, I finally sold it realizing I was never going to do it. But now that we're in an age of technology, what kind of software programs do you recommend to do this in? So it's a digital photo book and it takes a lot less time. Yeah, yeah. I did do the the scrapbooks, but it's just so labor intensive. And I know some people love that and have kind of groups around it and that sort of thing. But for me, I'm just trying to survive here. So I use, I personally use Shutterfly. I've used other programs in the past, other software programs in the past, but my process is built around Shutterfly. The reason for that is I feel like their book making technology is really easy to use and really customizable. And also I like, I love processes where you can kind of kill two birds with one stone, as they say. So for me, I use the Shutterfly bookmaking, but I also use their share sites for kind of a dual purpose. So I use their share site to capture all the photos that we'll talk about in my process, but I also use it to share photos with family so that anyone who's not on social media or photos I don't want to share on social media can go out to family and then I don't have, that's all happening proactively at the same time without any extra work. I love that. And this is your, your number one step in the process. So you guys, Melissa is going to walk us through the entire process. And then she has some great success tips for us at the end. And I know using that Shutterfly album um, is kind of that first step for you. When you, obviously you've been doing this for many, many years, but for someone new, like for me starting out, if I said, okay, 2018 is the year, I'm going to finally start doing photo books. How easy would it be for me to set up like the folders and all of that, like how much time do you think it would take to, to get that process rolling? 
it's literally like five minutes, 10 minutes, because you're not going to set up everything all at once. All you would do is go into Shutterfly. I personally t use, I create a Shutterfly share site. So I have a family Shutterfly share site. You might be familiar with them. I know a lot of schools use them or sports teams to share photos and calendars and things like that amongst groups of people. But a share site for me, I just create a family one and separate from our album conversation here. I just invite, you know, different family members to view the pictures, but you could literally just set up simple share Shutterfly albums as well. So if you don't want to kind of you know, tackle that photo sharing challenge at the same time as this, then skip the share site step of it and just create an album in there. So for example, you would go in and create a new album in your photo album storage place like Shutterfly and I label it 2018 January and that's it. So I save it and then download the app. So I downloaded, there's two different apps for Shutterfly. One is the share site app and one is the regular app. So I use the share site app, download that app and the album is, is right there. And then I'm able to start saving photos to it. That's amazing because that was one of the questions I had for you was the kind of the process. And I know that it kind of leads us into step two in the process, but what that looks like to transfer the photos from your smartphone to the computer. But if it's an app that's right there, that makes it even easier. Yeah, there's no way. I, like, I never transfer the app of photos to app, uh, the computer anymore. It's too much work. So it's literally on a Saturday night and we can kind of jump into step two. But what I do is I create that, you know, create my share sites to start with or a photo album. And then step two is... On a weekly basis, I just, you know, I'm just watching TV on a Friday night. I'll go through and look at the photos that I took or on a Sunday night and look at the photos I took for that week. And I find the ones that I loved. So, you know, if it was kind of a more of a mundane week, it might just be a couple. If it was some, you know, special activity, there might be a handful, but I go in, I pick out the ones that I love. I edit them literally just nothing, nothing intense. I just use the um, app on my phone, the, the camera app to edit them and press the automatic edit and it saves. And then I um, mark that as a favorite. And then after I do that, so I, I pick out, you know, five or, or 10 photos for the week. Uh, then I go into my share site app and I pick out the album that I had created. So the one example we were using, 2018 January, and I press upload and I filter it to favorites. So I know exactly, I don't have to like try to remember which were the good ones. I just, I already know, I've already marked them and I press upload and it uploads those photos into the album. And so as you do that week by week, by the end of the month, you have a, you, you know, the favorite photos for the month that you want to eventually put into your album. That's amazing. So as you were talking about that, I was thinking I need to set an alarm on my phone for Friday night because I do the same thing Friday night. I mean, I, I've got kids at home and, you know, I'm nearing 40. It's not like I'm out there doing a, a super exciting party up on Friday night. <laughs> I'm at home watching TV in my comfy pants. So yeah, to set an alarm on my phone to go in and do that, I think that that could be a really easy way to set up a, a structure to create a standard operating practice around that. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So then, so you do that every week. So our example, we would do that every week in January and then in February. So I just have it marked in my calendar that on the 10th of, of the month, I go in and work on my photo album. All right. So Melissa, so number one is just to kind of create everything, get your, your folder set up, whether it's in Shutterfly or any other program that they use. Um, but you use Shutterfly. And then number two is kind of create that weekly basis where you're going in and going through the photos just like you had outlined, which is awesome. And then what would be the next step? So then the next step is just at the end of the month, I, I log in and on the album description, I just type in my favorite memories from that month. Like, uh, you know, we went, we did this as a family, you know, what I, we went bowling, my seven year old lost a tooth, you know, whatever the, whatever the things are. So it could be activity. I like to capture it as activities, milestones and funny sayings. So sometimes I do that at the very end of the month. Sometimes I do it as I go along. I try not to pressure myself to, to think of something great to write there, but it's always fun to look back and see, 
kind of just that overall description of, of what happened that month. I love it. That's so good. Cause sometimes that's the stuff that we really forget, you know, that we, we want to hold on to and, and really cherish those memories. So I love that you're doing that too. All right. So what's next? So far, we've got our uh, albums created for a month. So we've got all of our photos captured for that month. And we've got all of our kind of text documented, the, the fun sayings and milestones and memories. So I set up a process where the following month, I just pick a day like the 10th of February, the 10th of the following month. So in the, our example, it would be February 10th. I go in and I create the actual pages in my photo album. So I will go, I go in, the, the first one takes a little bit longer because you haven't created the photo album yet. But for example, in January, in February, I will go in, I'll create a photo album and Shutterfly has some templates that you can pick from. So I, my favorite one is called Our Best Year. And I just go in, I pick the template that I want to use and I create the book, which is a couple clicks. And then I skip a couple of pages in the very beginning because at the end of the year, I'll want to put some summary and my favorite photos and that kind of thing. And then I just start by creating the pages for that month. So for January, I always like to put like a January sticker on there. They call it a sticker. Obviously, it's, it's a virtual sticker. And then I put the, on the first page, I always just copy and paste in all of that text from my album description. And then I literally just drag and drop all the photos onto the pages. And Shutterfly is really easy because they have um, this concept called a storyboard. And literally, you can just drag the, the pictures onto all the different pages at one time and then press, you know, save. And then you can go back and look at each page and kind of tweak them after that. So it literally takes you, I mean, if you want to kind of make it look amazing, like an hour, uh, an hour when you're doing that, those monthly pages. I love that. And then you do the same thing where you're copying those memories, milestones, all of that stuff in there with the photos. So it's all done. So it's really like part of your, your monthly SOPs that you're doing. That's right. That's right. I call it the end of month operating procedure and like things like my budget, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff all fits into that. And I try to spread them all out. So they're not all at one time, you know, all on the fifth of the month or the 10th of the month or whatever. Beautiful, beautiful. So for our Life Balance members listening, those would be your monthly SOPs that you would want to make sure you're plugging into your calendar to execute against as well. I love that. So once you've kind of go through February and you set up the album, you move the photos, you put in all of the, the notes and you make it look the way that you want it to look, then what do you do? And then, and then you save it. And then, um, <laughs> important. That's an forget. important tip. Save it. <laughs> That's right. Just save it. <laughs> and then you repeat this process I just described to you over again in February. So we just finished the pages for January. So then in February, you do the same thing over again with, um, you know, picking out your favorite photos, saving those to your album, capturing some text that you'll want to put into the book eventually. And then, you know, the following month, you'll make the pages for February. So it just becomes a very repeatable process and it helps you to keep on top of those photos so that you're, you're picking them out as you go, organizing them as you go. And then you've got your pages as the year progresses and you don't have to have this huge pile that you end up just putting in the corner because you don't want to look at it. Or a bin that you shove in the garage. Like or the me. garage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. That's right. <laughs> or a Dropbox folder on my computer. And it is fun to like go through the Dropbox folder with the kids and be like, oh my gosh, look at this random picture from when you were two. And then the next one is when you were seven. And the next one's when you were a newborn because they're not in any order. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. All right. So this is really great. And I could see how in the very beginning, I might need to have some calendar reminders and things like that kind of built into my system. But if you're doing the same thing consistently every week and every month, it kind of becomes part of your routine and your habit. And I can imagine for me, at least a couple months in, I would feel so gratified just like with what I've been able to accomplish, even though I'm not done yet. 
Absolutely. And you know what the best, so you start to see that progress throughout the year. And then in January, you feel like you've crushed it because you already, you, it's so few steps to just finish up the album, put, you know, you put some cute photos, uh, your favorite photos in the first couple of pages, put a cover on it, maybe go through the whole thing and just edit it a little bit and, and press send when, you know, whatever book provider you're using has a coupon. So that's the best feeling is just, you know, know when you start the the year off with a huge project like that, getting checked off, it's a, it's a, an awesome feeling. I love that. And I love that you, I mean, this is obviously such a proven method because this is your eighth year that you've done it, right? Nine years, 10 years. How long have you been doing it? I thought it was eight, but I was looking at the, at the books a little bit ago and it's actually my 10th year. So that's amazing. So obviously it works (laughs) and being a busy mom, three kids, everything else, you're able to kind of fit it in and make room for this into your schedule, which I think is really incredible. And the fact that you have all those memory books and you have your baby books, what a gift for your kids to have. And even for ourselves, I think sometimes we think about, you know, it's for the kids to remember, but I think I get more satisfaction about looking back at those photos than probably they do. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also fun. Um, you know, the kids, they're young and they don't remember everything. Like they don't li- remember us living in Hawaii. So it's fun to look back and they, they enjoy looking back through these photo albums, even at their ages. So I know we'll enjoy them for a long time. I love it. And I know you have some tips for us to help make this process even easier and even better, which I'm really excited to dive into those. And I have some questions for you too about this whole process. But before we get to those, let's first hear from our sponsor. Hey guys, since we're talking about being intentional, I have to talk to you about Prep Dish because the two just go hand in hand. It's such a no brainer when you are wanting to live a more intentional life. Now, you know, I'm all about pre planning, whether it be your calendar or your to-dos, and especially things like your meals. So let me tell you three things that I love about Prep Dish. Number one, they make it so easy for me to eat healthy and to stick to some of the goals that I have for myself. All of their meal plans are paleo or gluten-free, and I can totally rest assured that not only am I aligning myself to reach my health goals, but I'm also helping to support my family in a healthy way too. The second thing I love so much about Prep Dish is not only do they tell you what to eat, but they give you a great shopping list that can link right to Instacart so you can have your groceries delivered to you if you choose to add in that service. But it also tells you how to prep your food, like what to do after you bring home all of those bags from the grocery store. Because sometimes I need to know step one, step two, step three, and they make it so incredibly simple. The third thing that I love so much about Prep Dish is when I got my meal plan for this week, there was a fast and easy menu option. Yes, because like they read my mind on how crazy January is for our family. And they made a very simple, fast and easy menu plan just for me. Maybe not just for me. It's probably for everybody. But that's what I love about them so much. So if you are looking to be intentional about eating healthy and making it take a whole lot less time, then Prep Dish is a no-brainer. And you don't have to just trust me. You can try it for yourself for free for two whole weeks. Just go to PrepDish.com forward slash YLR to activate your free two-week trial. Again, that's PrepDish.com forward slash YLR. All right, you guys. Now let's get right back to Melissa. All right, you guys, we are back and we've been talking with Melissa Lieberman from Crushing Motherhood, and she is teaching us her process in creating picture books for our family on an annual basis where it fits right into everything we're doing every week, every month. It really makes it simple. So Melissa, welcome back to the show. I'm super excited with everything you've shared. I can't wait to dive in myself and actually start making some picture books, but I know you have some tips for us and I have some questions for you as well. So first, let's hear from you on the tips. Okay, sure. So the first tip is figure out what your, uh, whatever um, bookmaker you choose, we've been talking about Shutterfly that I use, but whatever bookmaker you use, figure out what the page limit is that they, uh, some have, don't have a page limit. Shutterfly does, I believe it's 110 pages. And then divide that by, I divide it by 13, just so that I can have kind of those summary pages for the year in the beginning. And then you, you know how many pages you can have per month. 
because you certainly don't want to go through a process where you're creating 40 pages per month and all of a sudden you run out of book pages, you know, that are available to you by April. So that's one easy way to do it. And it kind of gives you a guideline and a goal of how many pages you want to fill out each month at maximum. That's a great um, tip. The second tip is I love to scan in different things. So I'll scan in works little, you know, fun artwork that the kids made in school or tickets to special events or other mementos that we, you know, collected during that month. And then I will put those into the pages as well. Or sometimes, you know, the scanning process takes a little bit more time. And sometimes I don't keep on top of that. So I'll just put them in the back of the book kind of as a, as a couple of pages with a bunch of those types of things. But it's always fun to have those to look at, you know, what their art, their favorite artwork was or them writing their name and what that looked like um, or a handprint or something like that. And then you feel less guilt when you have to throw those things away as well. So I have a question for you. Have you ever taken a picture of those mementos? And the reason why I'm asking that is just how that would fit into the the whole system. So like if it's like a piece of art, because sometimes they come home from school with art that they're really proud of, but it's ginormous. And I'm like, I don't even know where to put this thing. It's so big. So do you just like, have you ever tried to like just take a picture of it? And how does that fit into the photo album? Yeah, Jenny. So I think you just um, identified a process improvement for me. I think I've been doing this for so long that it never dawned on me that I could <laughs> take a picture of that stuff versus like taking all the effort to scan it in. So I don't see why that wouldn't work. And in fact, for my um, January pages, I'm going to do that for myself. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we could help each other out. <laughs> oh, that's so good. And I know you have a tip too about baby books, right? Yes. So those things, I know they're daunting. Um, so what I did is I actually just did the same exact process for the baby books. So it was a little bit more work when, you know, in that first year for the babies when my kids were babies, but I would just do the same exact process I described to you for the baby book as well as our family album. So it made it, it made it so that again, I just stayed on top of things month to month and I didn't, you know, I was able to capture those favorite photos as well as the milestones and fun, you know, memories as I went along. And then I, um, you know, made the last pages of their first birthday and printed it off. So that's, that's how those all got, were all completed and, and aren't just in a shoebox. I love this. And so I like a good challenge. And so I'm going to challenge myself to make baby books, even though my kids are so not babies <laughs> anymore. They're almost, well, one's way taller than me and the other one's almost as tall as me, but I'm going to, I'm going to make 2018 the year that I do baby books. And the reason is, is I think so much of the time as moms and, and I want to hear your thoughts on this too, but we can sometimes like measure our worth in a mom as a mom in the things that we are able to do like picture books and you know doing all of like the mom things the quote unquote mom things and i'm sure it's not right and we can argue that like, we shouldn't find our value in that but the truth is like are we are emotionally tied to some of those outcomes and the things that we do whether we agree with it or not i mean i don't agree with it but i still feel guilty because i haven't done these kind of things so i'm going to challenge myself to to do these i think it will really help me feeling like I'm, I don't want to say a better mom, but like, do you kind of get what I'm saying? Like, do you kind of feel the same way? Absolutely. I mean, it's that inner battle and struggle, right? So you don't want to hold yourself to all these standards and societal requirements and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, it, you know, you do, I think I do at least. What did I send to the bake sale? Um, was it good enough? Was it homemade or did I have to buy it? All of those things. So I guess the trick is just parsing out the ones that are really important and will be um, benefit over the long run and maybe let some of the other ones go. And this one, I mean, honestly, I take a lot of pride in the fact that I have these baby books and I know it probably will annoy some people that, oh, she has a baby book and, and mine's in the, in the uh, box, shoe box still. But it's, it, you take a lot of pride from that. So I think there's personal satisfaction that comes with it. And it's not just kind of forcing ourselves to meet some standard that shouldn't exist. 
Well, and here's the thing, and this is why I love everything that you're doing over at Crushing Motherhood is because I don't necessarily think, and maybe some people might be annoyed when you say that, but for me, not having baby books, knowing that you have done it, it inspires me to know that I can do baby books for both of my kids. You have one more child than I do and you have baby books for all of them. But not only that, but not only is it inspiring, but you've also walked me through the process step by step. And you know me, I like step by step practical things. And so this is something I feel that is doable for me to do, even though it's been many years since we have had babies in our house, but to do the baby books. But in addition to that, do the annual books and, and kind of make that just part of our process going forward. And then if, you know, sometime in the future, I have time to backdate some books. Awesome. But if not, at least from this year forward, 2018 forward, I have a process, thanks to you, that I can actually do this and feel like I'm making that step forward. And so I want to thank you so much for coming on the show and being that inspiration and for guiding us through this process so that we can all take that step forward to be that mom that we want to be. Whether society says we should be that mom or we argue with that or whatever, but it's that step forward for all of us towards that goal of being that mom and having that intention of being the mom that we want to be. So thank you so much, Melissa. This is really valuable. Uh, thanks for having me, and I'm glad that it was uh, an inspiring topic for you and hopefully for the listeners also. So, Melissa, where can people learn more about you? Because, like I said, you are always putting out great content. One, your kids are really entertaining to watch on social media. But two, everything that you have over on Crushing Motherhood is so practical, it's so real, and it's so helpful. So where can people learn more about you? Oh, sure. I'm on uh, crushingmotherhood.com as my website, and I publish a blog weekly. And I also am on Facebook, Crushing Motherhood on Facebook and on Instagram. And I also have a Pinterest, a lot of Pinterest boards where I save a lot of this type of inspiration. And I love it's it. Crushing Motherhood as well. So you guys, make sure you go check out her website, read her blog, uh, subscribe to all of the free stuff that she has for you and follow her everywhere because you will not be disappointed by that for sure. Well, thank you so much for Melissa for coming on the show. It was so great chatting with you and I want you to hold me accountable. So I'm going to send you a message once I start this process and I want you to hold me accountable for the first month. Okay. That sounds good. Like a plan. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. And there you have it. Now we have no excuse but to take action on the things that Melissa taught us. I know I have already started taking action just since this interview. Now, one thing that I really, really love about Melissa, you know, one thing that I really, really love about Melissa is that she has that great balance about everything that she does where it's very, very realistic, but it's not stuck. It's not stuck in the chaos and the overwhelm and glorifying that. It's just showing real life, but yet she keeps us all moving forward to help us become the best version of ourselves possible, which is exactly what we do here at Your Life Rock. So it's a perfect combination. Now, if you wanna learn more about Melissa, and I highly encourage that you do follow her on social media because it's incredible, the stuff that she shares. It always makes me smile. Sometimes I laugh out loud. It's awesome. You can find her at crushingmotherhood.com. Of course, you can find her on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, all of those with Crushing Motherhood as well. And because Melissa is so awesome, she has a free gift for all of you and a special gift for our Life Balance members. Now, all of our listeners can go to crushingmotherhood.com and download her free 10 tips for reclaiming eight hours in a week. Yes, you can get eight hours back. So you think about how much time it would take you in a week or a month to do the things that she taught you how to do. If you go and get her free download, you'll now have the time to do them. That's pretty awesome, right? See, she thinks of everything. Now, specifically for our Life Balance members, everything that she talked about, she has put together in a great little guide, along with a lot of other tips and tricks to doing this entire process. So if you're looking for that checklist and everything that she talked about in written form, then you can find that in the resource section. Go to family and then you'll find the download right there on creating memory books with Melissa from Crushing Motherhood. I want to thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to listen to this episode. I hope that you follow us, Your Life Rocks, on social media as well. You can find us over on Facebook or Instagram is your.life.rocks and join the free community. You know, I announced last week in our free community a giveaway all last week long of our new Bible study, Goal Setting in God's Will. So if you're a part of the Facebook community, 
then you were able to get your hands on that for free. We're always doing fun stuff like that over there. So go on over and join the club. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button because next week we are going to be talking all about being intentional with designing a career that you love, whether it's staying exactly where you are, but maybe changing a couple things to make it ideal for you, or you're looking for a complete career overhaul, you will get all of that next week as we dive into creating an intentional career. So I hope that you join me for that. And until then, keep building a life that rocks. Bye.